Hello again. I'm back with another clock to repair. This one is the Jefferson Golden Hour Mystery Clock. I've seen these at flea markets, antique stores, on eBay, and they're always very expensive. eBay has working ones that go for uh, as much as $90 to $200, depending on the condition, and they have non-working ones that go for $60 to $65, which I felt was just too much money. But I came across this one at a very reasonable price. It was an offer I could not refuse, so I got it. This one is advertised as non-working. So far, I have plugged it in to verify that it does, in fact, not work. I really know nothing about these clocks or why it's called the Jefferson, so I looked up some of the history on the company. And I think you'll probably see it more clearly if I put this behind it. That's a little better. Now, it turns out that these clocks were designed by an electrical engineer named Warren Ferguson, and he worked for a company called Jefferson Electric. Jefferson Electric started in 1915, and production of these clocks began on December 2nd, 1949. They were inspired by what was known as a Dutch secret clock that was made in Amsterdam. The idea came from the wife of the president of Jefferson Electric, who saw what she thought was an interesting clock while on vacation in the Netherlands. He liked it, he simplified the construction of it, and it became the golden hour clock, and he purchased the patent rights to it. The secret part of the clock is how the hands move without any obvious drive mechanism. The way it works is there's a motor-driven gear in the base that is attached to a gear that's sort of a gear ring around the dial, and that's what causes the glass to slowly rotate. It turns very slowly at one revolution per hour. Before attempting to take this one apart, I went onto YouTube to see if there were any videos on how to fix these clocks, and I found a few. The most helpful one was a channel called Bugsy's Dad Enterprises. He also has a site by the same name, and he specializes in restoring and selling these clocks. And a spoiler alert, Bugsy is the guy's cat. When I started to look more closely, one thing I noticed is that the glass rotates within the dial. And I had never seen that addressed or uh, evident in any of the videos that I had seen. So I reached out to Bugsy's dad and asked, is that a normal thing with these clocks? And he tells me that it is not. What has happened is the glass has become loose or free from the gear ring that's in here, and it needs to be reattached to it. Although there might be some other issues with the clock, that alone is enough to make it not work. Another interesting thing is the fact that the minute hand is on the outside of the glass but the hour hand is on the inside and it's unusual design there's a sort of a counterweight here which keeps the hour hand i guess always hanging down as it goes around the dial in any event i want to get this set up on my work table and we'll start to take it apart the first thing i want to do is remove the motor from in here and verify that it's in fact working to do that I have to undo a couple of screws from this bottom plate. Okay, so we have the motor connected with these wire nuts. A couple of screws down here. I'm going to loosen those next. That should, that should be enough to get the motor removed from here. Okay. There we have it. All right. Let's put this down. Whoop. And now we'll plug it in and let's see if this thing's running. Okay. Plugged in. Turned on. Now, I don't know how slow the gear is going to turn, if it's working at all, if it rotates at one revolution per hour, but let's see if we can tell right off the bat here. It 
Well, I think it's turning, but it's really slow. <laughs> I may let this go. I think what I'm going to do is I'll put a little dot on one of the teeth and let it go for a few minutes and then come back and take a look to see if, if it's moved. So how about right over here? Okay, let's give this some time. It's been a few minutes and I'm happy to say that the mode is working. I'll try to zoom in. If you noticed, I put a dot which would be equivalent to the nine o'clock position. And now it's pointing almost to the 12 o'clock, a little bit past. So it's working, good news there. Let's unplug it, let's zoom out. Okay, what I have to do next is I wanna remove the dial ring from the base. And I think you noticed or heard the motor seems to be making a little bit of noise, although when it's a good foot or so away from me, I'm not really hearing it. And I believe that when it's in uh, the housing here, the base, I'm not gonna hear it either because I did plug it in and heard nothing. So, and which made me wonder, was it working or not? I didn't know the reason behind it. In any event, let me remove the ring here from the base. Let's put this aside first. Another interesting thing I see here is the manufacture date is printed on the base. This one says October 2nd, 1952, 10252. Okay, so these are the two screws that are holding the ring to the base. Let's work on that. There you go. Okay, what I have to do next is remove this ring from the dial ring, and that's gonna get the gear out of here. And then with that, the loose piece of glass. I also wanna mention that I've explained why it's called the mystery clock, but the reason that it's called the golden clock is that this is not just gold colored paint covering the base and the rim. This is actually a thin coating of 24 karat gold. So you have to be very careful cleaning these. You never want to use a metal polish that'll strip the gold off. Just a, a very soft cloth, warm water. If there's a bit of dirt on it, perhaps uh, something like Dawn detergent. Um, but you have to be very careful cleaning this. Let me first move some of this aside so I have room to work here. Before attempting to take off the ring, I want to remove the hands. And to do that, there's what they're calling a cone nut here. That unscrews. Minute hand comes off. And there's a couple of washers here. One is a curved one. And when it goes back together, the curve has to be facing up and then a flat washer, and then what they're referring to as a fiber washer. There it is. Now on the hour hand, I'm from the other side, another fiber washer is here, but that stays put. Okay, so remove the ring, you just have to gently pry up with a small screwdriver and kind of work your way around a little bit. Let's see if I can do this. Now 
and ultimately it should just sort of pop out. You just have to be careful because you don't want to bend it. Definitely having some trouble here, aren't I? Come on. Okay, I'm not going to force it. I'm going to take my time, and I don't want to spend a lot of time having you watch me spend a lot of time, so let me see if I can pop it out, and then I'll continue. It may be easier for me to remove it going the other direction, so let's see if this works. There we go. I just popped it over this little bitty lip that holds it in. There we are. So here's the retaining ring, for lack of a better word. Now I should be able to remove the glass and the gear ring. And in this case, because the glass is separated from it, it's coming out on its own. And you can see what's left of the dried glue that secured it to this gear ring. And what I have to be careful of, and I'll show you this. So this is the main gear that slowly makes the whole thing turn. And sitting in here are these little spring clips. There's three of them. And in the ring are these little cutouts. One here, here, and on this side. That one's still in. They're positioned with the curb going up. And these have gotten quite dirty. So I'm going to have to clean all the dirt and debris, probably from the accumulation of dust over the years. Yeah, it's pretty dirty in here. Once I have that clean, then I'm going to show how to re-glue this to, whoops, to the gear ring. That's all I need to break the crystal. Anyway, well, the first step, I'm going to clean up the dial ring and I'm going to clean off all the old glue that's on the uh, glass so I'll work on that and then I'll continue okay I'll show you what I've done so far I cleaned up the glass I scraped off all of the old adhesive from it it's looking nice and clean I did the same thing to the gear ring I was able to remove most of the old adhesive that was on it and I also cleaned the inside of the dial ring got all the dirt out of that and the gold really cleaned up quite shiny. I like how that's looking. We also cleaned up the uh, retaining ring. This uh, had a lot of dirt on the inside of this as well. And also cleaned the little spring clips. So what I have to do next is glue the glass back into the uh, gear ring. And the way to do that, what's recommended to use is a product by 3M. It's called a rubber and gasket adhesive. And what I believe the deal with this is that when it sets, it has a bit of a rubbery consistency to it, which I assume gives a bit of a cushion in here. So any kind of maybe extra stresses that might be subjected to the clock, maybe it makes it less likely for the glass to crack. In any event, what I'm going to do next is let me move everything off of here and I'll get set up to show you how I'm going to glue it. I've set up the gearing on a piece of wood because I want a nice flat surface for this to sit on. And I'm just going to try to put a very thin bead of this all the way around the edge. So 
okay. Now we'll seat the glass in it. And now I have to weight this down so that it's all the way seated. And I'm using a dish that has a rubber bottom and just a few weights in here to hold it down. And I'm just going to let this cure overnight. And we'll check it out first thing in the morning. Okay, it's been sitting overnight and hopefully it's not glued down to the wood. You know, a little bit. There we go. Well, this is not bad at all. There's a bit of excess glue on the glass, around the edge a bit, but a razor blade will clean that off, so let me work on that. I've cleaned off the glass. Next I have to seat the gear back into the dial ring. But first I have to put the spring clips back in. One there. And the third. And they go in with the curve facing upwards. Okay, and now I have to lock it in with the retaining ring. Just position this a bit off to the side. There's a notch over here, which fits into a little indent. I'll try to put it off to the side. And then kind of rotate it into position. Whoop. Try that again. This is a little difficult, isn't it? That's in. This one is not. Okay, just have to pop it in over here on the edge, I think. Let's see how we do. And we're in. Okay, what I'm going to do next is reattach this to the base. Actually, you know what? First, I'm going to put the hands back on, but before I put the hands back on, I like to clean them up a bit as well. So let me work on that. The hands have been cleaned, and a couple of things I want to show. One is whether it's from removing this ring, taking it on and off, cause it to get a little bit bent. Uh, but there's a bit of play here now, right over here. And I was concerned about the overall fit, but I discovered that when I place this back into the base, it holds this part of the ring very snug. So I don't think it's gonna be a problem. The other thing is the hands have been cleaned, as I said. When you put them back together, what you wanna do is the stem that holds the minute hand has a couple of flat edges and that lets the minute hand line up in only one uh, direction. And what you wanna do is rotate this so that the counterweight is hanging straight down. 
and that should line up that stem so the minute hand lines up directly over the hour hand. So the hands are lined up evenly and the counterweight is right down the middle. So let's get this on the glass. So the hour hands on the 12. And then I have to seat the fiber washer and the flat washer and then the curved one with the curve going up and then the minute hand and the cone nut. Okay, next I'm going to reposition this back onto the base. Okay. Just have to secure it with a couple of screws now. There's one. And just got to tighten them up. And snug. What I have to do next is place the motor back in. I sort of have to angle it to get the gear lined up. go. And the tricky part is getting the screw in here. Okay. Try that again. Oh, that's not working either. Okay, give me a minute to figure this out on my own. I have the motor back on. It turns out you really need three hands for this. I ended up placing this in my lap so that it was sitting upright and then with two hands I was able to get the screws in. What I'm going to do next is reattach the bottom uh, base plate. Try to tuck the wire in a bit. There's one. All 
Okay, next I'm gonna set this back up on my workbench and we'll see if it runs. Okay, I have it set up and it's plugged in, but I haven't turned it on yet. Uh, what I wanna show is how you set the hands on this one. And I think, again, it'll be easier to see if I put the piece of wood behind it. The way you do it is, let's say the correct time is 11.30, you'd push the minute hand all the way down. To set the hour hand, if you want it to go forwards, you rotate it backwards. So now it's on around 8.30, that would be 9.30, 10.30, 11.30. Now once I turn it on, because there is no second hand, you really can't tell right away that it's running. So I'm going to do some time-lapse photography to see if I can get the minute hand moving a few minutes in just a few seconds. Well, that was pretty cool. So there you have it. It's the Jefferson Golden Hour Mystery Clock. This one was made October 2nd of 1952. I hope you enjoyed the video. It was uh, a fun one for me to work on, a most unusual clock. Uh, any questions and comments uh, will be appreciated. I look forward to hearing what you have to say about this one. And that pretty much wraps things up. Bye for now.